The red heartbeat of New York flashing out over a population sheltered indoors. Good evening once again, day 1182 of the Trump administration. 202 days remain until our presidential election. At the White House today, nothing but rosy scenarios in the Rose Garden. The president says, quote, a lot of good things are happening. He is determined to start opening the country again. Today, he said 20 states are doing better. Then he increased the number on the fly to 29. That, of course, is well over half the states in our country. He said we're a country that's getting better, and he is going to clear some states to open, as he continues to call it, before May 1st. Where the states are concerned, he said, quote, we have the right to do whatever we want. In other news, and we'll have more on this in a moment, he says he doesn't know anything about his name needing to appear on those IRS checks that are going out. And he slipped a bit of news into today's briefing. The U.S. is about to send ventilators to Russia. As we let all that settle in, let's check back in with the real world, shall we? This was the deadliest day thus far for this epidemic in the U.S., with 2,492 new deaths, 2,492. Tonight, more than 32,000 Americans have lost their lives. And despite the self-congratulation at the White House, we have crossed an important milestone. We've now tested 1% of our U.S. population. Another way of putting this is, if we start testing a million Americans a day, for the next year, we would then know with something closer to certainty how many Americans have this virus. Worldwide, cases now closing in on 2 million. Tonight, we have breaking news of the grisly and sad variety as well. It's from the New York area. The New York Times reporting that police in the small town of Andover, New Jersey, quote, discovered 17 bodies piled inside a nursing home in a small morgue intended to hold no more than four people. This is a nursing home where several previous deaths had been linked to coronavirus. Today, the, the president spent a lot of his briefing blaming Senate Democrats for the vacancies in his administration. Pos positions, he says, are critical to combating the spread of the virus. He urged the Senate to adjourn so he can use recess appointments to install nominees a move that would no doubt provoke a confrontation with Congress, which is out of town until May 4th. Many, many positions that are uh, unstaffed because we can't get the approvals. The Democrats are holding us up. We cannot get approval. Uh, we've gotten judges because we go through the process. The Senate should either fulfill its duty and vote on my nominees or it should formally adjourn so that I can make recess appointments. We have a tremendous number of people that have to come into government, and now more so than ever before because of the virus and the problem. Uh, we have to do it. Aside from the obvious constitutional issues, the Senate is controlled by the Republican Party. Tonight, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell also issued a statement reiterating nominees will need consent from Democrats. Trump also previewed his effort to issue guidelines for governors to reopen their economies, and he seemed to imply that the U.S. was so flush with medical supplies, we can now start sending them abroad. We'll also be speaking to America's governors tomorrow, and then we'll be announcing exactly what's happening. You already know we'll be opening up states, some states much sooner than others. And we think some of the states can actually open up before the deadline of May 1st. Governors are looking forward. They're chomping at the bit to get going. We're going to be helping other nations. We're going to be helping Italy, Spain, France, other nations. And we're going to be helping them strongly. I think Russia is going to need ventilators. They're having a hard time in Moscow. So there that was, while Trump announced that the U.S. had passed the peak on new cases, Dr. Deborah Burks was more cautious in her assessment. 
We've seen declines in cases across the country. And we are remaining concerned, and we've been having discussions with Rhode Island. Rhode Island and Providence are in a unique situation. First, they had increasing cases from the New York City area, and now they have new, new increasing cases from the Boston area. We see as a country, we're improving. We see as metro areas, we're improving. We see as communities, as counties, and as states, we're improving. But that also still requires everyone to continue to social distance. Today, Michigan's governor was the target of demonstrators who rallied at the state capitol protesting Governor Whitmer's stay-at-home orders. We'll have more on that later in the broadcast. Protesters in Kentucky also gathered at that state capitol to object to their governor's emergency measures. Meanwhile, the virus has spread into more of rural America. There are concerns that few communities will be able to handle a possible onslaught of cases on the local level. One of the other consequences of this, the rise in cases at meat processing plants, Smithfield, leading U.S. pork processor, says employees at their facilities in Wisconsin, Missouri, and South Dakota have tested positive. That has raised concerns about the meat supply. Today, the Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, tried to reassure the public. There's been a lot happening this week. It's COVID-19 is impacting food processing facilities, as you know. For Americans who be, may be worried about access to good food because of this, I want to assure you the American food supply is strong, resilient, and safe. Meanwhile, millions of out-of-work Americans are in desperate need of help, and that number is expected to grow by about another 5 million when the new unemployment numbers come out tomorrow. That would bring our total now to a number north of 22 million. That would be more people than live in the state of Florida. Relief checks will soon be in the mail for those without direct deposit, ca uh, direct deposit capability, and they will all have the president's name written on the checks. He was asked about that unprecedented move today. Why did you have your name added to these coronavirus relief checks? Well, I don't know too much about it, but I understand my name is there. Uh, I don't know where they're going, how they're going. I do understand it's not delaying anything, and I'm satisfied with that. I don't, I don't imagine it's a big deal. I'm sure people will be very happy to get a big, fat, beautiful check, and my name is on it. Help for small businesses also in peril. The Washington Post reporting the Small Business Administration was expected to run out of funds by day's end. Then there's this graph from The New York Times, a stark visualization of what's happening to the nation's retail and food sales. It's worse than any previous recession levels. Even as some Republicans are pressing the president to get the economy reopened now, it seems business leaders disagree. The president spoke with CEOs this afternoon, people familiar with the call telling the Wall Street Journal, quote, banking and financial services executives said the administration needed to dramatically increase the availability of coronavirus testing before the public would be confident enough to return to work, eat at restaurants or shop in retail establishments. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.